Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Joe at Colab Garage. We're here in our third installment of our Boost Logic Twin Turbo Kit for the Audi R8 or the Lamborghini Huracan. Uh, if you haven't been following along, I will link those videos up in that corner there for the first two videos in the series, which included the heat exchangers and ice tank and a little bit of wiring in the first video. Second video went into the middle of the car where we installed the fuel pump, the fuel pump controller, some control wires that needed to be ran. We also uh, put in our fire suppression system and the Boost Logic roll bar. So now we're finally on what most people would consider the fun part of the install, which is installing the, uh, the turbo kit itself and all of its supporting components. Uh, but this video is going to be a little bit of a supplement because most people may or may not go with the intake manifold. There's a lot of benefits to doing it that way. The intake manifold gives you a little bit of a margin of safety because the plastic OEM intake manifold is subject to deformation and can rupture if you don't have something go right in the uh, the tune-up. And also, yeah, this looks cool, let's be honest. It does give a little bit better airflow characteristics, but it's been shown that the factory intake manifold actually does pretty good. So is this absolutely required for your twin turbo kit build? I would say, depending on your power level, no. If you're gonna be 1400 horsepower and below, you could probably leave well enough alone and just do the reinforcement spacers and some of the other things that you need to do on the factory manifold. The intake manifold also allows you to simplify a lot of what's going on on that intake manifold that's in there now. And you'll see some of that when we get into the time lapse of everything that has to happen. There's a lot of solenoids, vacuum lines, and, and uh, purge valves and whatnot that are living in the valley there. And a lot of that can be cleaned up when you go with an aftermarket component. So we're going to jump into some time lapse. We'll come back, gap some spark plugs to make sure we can support forced induction adequately. We're going to finish the fuel system install, which is your fuel rails, the remaining lines, the injectors, and the wiring of those injectors to make them more reliable than just using some pigtails. And then we'll uh, finally get into installing the intake manifold itself. It's in a couple different pieces, but we'll stop along the way to make sure we can highlight uh, the things that we think are interesting. And uh, with that, we'll jump into some time lapse. All right, so what you saw there was Greg just pulling off all the stock stuff. So it's kind of tedious, there's a lot involved. You have to really dive into the depths of the, the valley of the motor to pull everything out. You gotta get the, the direct fuel injection rails out of there because the uh, lowermost part of the intake plenum runner uh, is nestled in between that. So this is kind of what it looks like when it's removed. And uh, when Greg was in there, let me, uh, we'll just walk over here because this is worth showing. It's probably one of the trickiest parts. You have to kind of do a little bit of puzzle and fit this stuff together. So I'll have Greg show how that goes in there and onto the engine. 
it kind of rolls into position and then you, you put that down in there. Now, uh, Greg did mention when he was pulling this off that the instructions say that it's going to likely leave a few of the uh, DI injectors behind. Well, it leave, left like most of them behind. So when you do that, it's got to make sure you're careful because if you've driven your car at all, you're going to have some debris, some dirt grime, little uh, pebbles down in there that you want to make sure that you have everything uh, plugged off, which we've done here. But then if you have access to a vacuum cleaner or whatever, you're going to want to be able to suck all that out and uh, prep the area. And uh, we've already got one of them in, in place. And it, uh, they're provided with the O-rings here <clears throat> that you're going to put in place. Then you're going to put the rail back in. Uh, Greg is going to do the other side here in just a few minutes. And then also over here that um, we always tend to do when we do our builds, you can buy uh, injector jumper harnesses. But in all the years that we've been doing this, I mean, we love Injector Dynamics and the guys at T1 make awesome products, but we just not, have not had great luck with the um, jumper harnesses because if you get a fault where they're not connected, then you can have that in, in injector go dead for a moment in that cylinder. And if you're under boost, that's not a good thing. So we go ahead and just get rid of that possibility and direct wire that in. So we're doing that and then we'll jump back into the time lapse. Guys, we're taking a little break from the time lapse. I know that was very long because we were uh, going through and eliminating a lot of things that you don't need on a Motec car. So I know we said this is a supplemental video because a lot of you guys probably aren't going to go with this build intake manifold because it's not absolutely required. And then, you know, same thing kind of goes with the Motec. But when you're in there, you can eliminate a lot of stuff. So I have the camera kind of come down here down into the valley, there is a ton of solenoids and vacuum lines that operate your secondary air control, your uh, exhaust valves, and your EVAP purge solenoids. So you can get rid of two of those three. You have to keep the EVAP because you gotta have that fun system functioning properly, but you can get rid of the exhaust flaps and you can get rid of the secondary air. Boost Logic sells a, a block off. So if you're getting rid of the factory CU and you're going MoTeC, there's quite a bit more work involved in kind of decluttering this area and making sure you have that all buttoned up. So <clears throat> we did a lot of that. We also got the lowers in. I think we already talked a little bit about that with uh, having to roll the high pressure fuel rail uh, cage into position. And then uh, we also, got a little bit further so over in this corner here you see the injector dynamics fuel filter it goes to the flex fuel sensor which is tucked in behind the coolant reservoir so you can't really see it it's kind of a clever way a uh, uh, place to tuck it in then it goes from here to the fuel rail on the passenger side and then there's going to be a link piece here that we have not installed yet that goes from this rail to this rail and then it comes over here from this rail. You're going to see it go over to the fuel pressure regulator, which is tucked way back here in the corner. So a couple more things we got to do, and then we'll be ready to bolt the plenum into place.
we've uh, got another little stopping point to kind of go over what, what Greg's been doing here. So we've had to reconfigure just a few things due to the way uh, this car is configured. So we're actually uh, made some different lines uh, for a crossover between the two rails. We're using some of our BMRS line and fittings. I think mostly just because we were sent something that's supposed to be a 10 to a 10, which the Boost Logic rails are 8 to 8. So we remade that. And then we got the line routed so that, like I said uh, in my previous comments, the flex fuel sensor is tucked in on a bracket behind the coolant expansion tank. And then it routes around to the, uh, the rail here. So the way the fuel flows out of the filter over to the flex fuel sensor, to the rail, crosses over and then comes out over to the regulator and then right now Greg is crimping some additional lines to run to feed the direct injection straight from the uh, the regulator itself that's the other small change that we made we just felt like it was going to be packaged better in order to do that so once we uh, get all that on there I think we're finally going to be able to put the plenum on the intake All right, so we got quite a bit further on this. This project for the intake manifold, I know at the start of the video, I made it sound like this was gonna be pretty quick, but it's actually a lot more involved because we are doing MoTeC. So like I had already said, with MoTeC, you can eliminate the, the secondary air pumps for the exhaust gas recirculation, the uh, exhaust flapper doors, all that stuff can be pulled out when you're on a MoTeC car. So we wanna do that because all of that is under the intake manifold. So that's why we're putting that in this portion of the video. And this is kind of like the supplemental, like we said, not everybody is gonna go with an intake manifold. So what we've got down here on the ground is everything that we were able to take off when you go with MoTeC and an aftermarket plenum because you can get rid of a lot of these provisions. So you have the, uh, the air pumps that go on each side. You have the vacuum accumulator that goes in the uh, the fender well for the exhaust flaps. There's also was one previously removed from the factory intake manifold. A bunch of solenoids, lines, and then all we have to put back on, and I don't know if you're gonna be able to get the camera in here or not, is right down in here where my finger's pointing. 
there's an EGR block off on this head, and then there's one on the opposite side as well, right down in there. Okay, so this is really kind of the final button up, and then we'll uh, be able to wrap this portion of the video up and then move on to finally, I know I've said that a couple times, install the bulk of the turbo kit and then get this thing on the dyno. Greg's just gotta go through and do all the final uh, torque specs on the plenum. We're gonna get the throttles on and get all the, these remaining few items that aren't plugged into the manifold yet, and we'll be ready to move on to the turbo kit. Alright guys, that is finally a wrap for this portion of the video. It was uh, a lot more involved than I thought it was going to be when we first decided to make this its own separate deal, but I'm kind of glad we did. It shows a lot of the steps that you may not necessarily do if you're just doing a basic turbo kit with uh, stock plenum and, and stock ECU, but uh, we're going a little bit further with this one, and so that's why we're making this the supplemental portion. We finally have the, the plenum installed. We have all the remote sensor fittings. I don't know if you can get down in there with the camera and see. We have our remote lines that plug into the plenum that is more centralized up here. Uh, so you have all the reference points built into the plenum on the Boost Logic manifold. And you know, a lot of the other manifolds have the same thing. You don't have to start teeing a bunch of stuff into all this. We were able to get rid of quite a bit of the extra vacuum lines and solenoids that you don't need if you're on MoTeC. Uh, all the fuel lines, everything's secure, and throttle bodies are on. So uh, we cheated ahead just a little bit. We have the oil tank, which on an R8, we always coat that just in like in a satin black finish. So it kind of disappears because it sticks out like a sore thumb if you just leave it. And uh, we got the intercooler caging on here. And you guys have probably seen uh, the teaser part of this uh, exhaust already multiple times. But the uh, next step is finally installing the turbo kit. Greg's going to get uh, going on that here uh, to start off the next video. And uh, we'll finally be ready to start this thing up. So with that, we'll see you guys on the next video.